So we have driven all over Southern Arizona today. We uh, went from Phoenix to Tucson to Saguaro National Park. From there, uh, my buddy Mike called me, he wants to go shoot the Comet Neowise tonight. But uh, we have to get southwest of Phoenix, so we drove another two hours to uh, near Gila Bend, a place called a Painted Rock Petroglyph Site. And we have some clear skies to the northwest. The sun's gonna set here in about 45 minutes. Uh, Mike and Paige and Joplin, the storm chasing dog, will be here in about 15 minutes. We're waiting for them right now. We're not gonna get much for sunset. Uh, we got clear skies, which is what we want for the Comet. So Mike's gonna be here in about 15 minutes. He's gonna give you guys some tips today on shooting the Comet. So when he gets here, I'll introduce you guys. And then we're going to do some astrophotography. All right guys, so I'm here with my buddy Mike. He's gonna teach you guys a few tips on how to shoot this Comet. Now, Mike does uh, storm chasing in Tornado Alley every May. He does workshops. I'm gonna put his website down in the description, so make sure you guys check it out. And uh, if you guys pay a little bit extra, you get flying cows. I gotta go, Julia, we got cows. That's right, flying cows. Hey guys, uh, Mike here. And I'm gonna walk you guys through a few tips for how to find Comet Neowise up in the sky and also how to do some beginner and intermediate photographs of the comet. First off, it's pretty easy right after sunset. You want to let the uh, sun get a little bit below the horizon and then look up for the Big Dipper. Find the bottom of the Big Dipper and then look kind of down into the left. And you want to make sure that your eyes are adjusted. You're not looking at the LCD of your screen or your camera or your cell phone. You just want to let your eyes adjust to the natural light. And then you'll see the comet kind of down to the left of the Big Dipper and it looks kind of hazy at first but the more your eyes adjust you'll start to see the actual nucleus of the comet and then the tail which is amazing right now. So to shoot it it's pretty easy. You can choose a variety of focal lengths. I've shot this comet with everything from about 24 millimeters all the way up to 85 up to 200 millimeters and uh, obviously the closer you get the more detail you have but the wider you are the more foreground you can incorporate and kind of give a sense of a scene to the comet. So tonight we're at the petroglyphs and I'm going to be shooting with my Nikon 14 to 24 millimeters, probably about 20 millimeters or so. And I want to utilize the petroglyphs in the front as foreground and have the, the comet right above them in the background. Now settings. You want to go ahead and boost your ISO up pretty high. So depending on your camera and its capabilities, somewhere between 2500 ISO to say 4000. Turn on your noise reduction so you kind of help get a cleaner uh, image when all is said and done. And then you want your aperture to be as low as possible. So this lens right here, 2.8. If you can do a 1.4, 1.8, that helps a ton as well. Now, exposure time, anywhere between 4 to 10 seconds will get it done. And it all depends on what you want. If you want a longer tail, but also have a little bit of star trailing, 10 seconds. If you want a shorter tail, but also a little bit more pinpoint tack sharp stars, try like four seconds. Play around with those. And also don't forget to play around with your white balance. I shoot everything on Kelvin. So I float right around 3,700 to 4,000 for my Kelvin, which gives a nice cool blue feeling to the sky, which for me is what I like with my night sky imagery. Focusing is gonna be the biggest headache you'll have. And I don't mean focusing as in picking your job off the floor, I mean focusing on the stars. So put your camera on manual focus utilize the live view that you've got on the back of the camera and zoom in to the comet or to a brighter star and try to manually focus until you get that star to be nice and pinpoint. Once you get that, you don't want to touch anything else. You don't want to recompose. You don't want to move your focal length. You don't want to zoom in or zoom out. Uh, keep your camera as steady as possible. And at that point, you are ready to shoot away. So that's my basic introduction to photographing comet Neowise. I hope that helps you guys out. Focusing in the dark is, is pretty tough and one of the biggest uh, obstacles when doing any kind of astrophotography. So what I've done is since I know I'm going to be right here when I take my shot uh, for that first comet shot, what I did was while there was still a bit of light, I found the brightest star in the sky 
and I was able to zoom in and manually focus and uh, all the way on that one star. So now that I know I'm focused to infinity, I'm perfectly sharp, I'm not gonna touch anything. I've taken my lens, put it in manual focus so it's not gonna accidentally uh, try and refocus or anything like that. So that's probably one of the biggest things that I've talked to people about and, and that's focusing in the dark and, and trying to get your stars, uh, stars really sharp. All right, so I have the 70 to 200 on and one of the things that's gonna happen that can also cause your stars to be uh, unsharp or elongated is a shutter speed that's too long like Mike mentioned earlier I'm probably gonna need about two seconds so what I did was I went on to my photo pills app there's a feature on there called spot stars and you put in your camera your focal length and it'll tell you what you need to get in order to have those stars um, not trailing so for mine at 85 millimeters um, shooting on the d850 I'm gonna need about two seconds or maybe even a little less. So I'm gonna have to bump that ISO up really high. Uh, I'm opening up to f2.8. So that's gonna be my very first shot here is f2.8, uh, ISO at whatever, I'm not really sure yet. I'm gonna have to wait and see how uh, the exposure is. And then my shutter speed is gonna be about two seconds. <laughs> 